So if you're planning on building a no-code app or you are in the midst of development right now, there is a ridiculously simple way to increase its value and to be able to charge the users more because of it. Now, this has nothing to do with adding more features and nothing to do with design. All it involves is a simple mindset shift. And in fact, the app I'm gonna share with you at the end of this video will show you just how easy this can be. But before we get there, the first thing you have to do is understand what value truly means. Now stick with me, I know that sounds really simple, but ultimately value has two factors as it relates to solving a problem. The first is a reduction in waste or loss that a customer or user experiences as they try to solve a problem. And two is an increase in outcome that a user or customer will experience when that problem is removed. Now, if your app can achieve both of those things for a user in solving a problem, those users will win. And because of that, you will win. To look at this a little bit differently though, your target market is currently experiencing some sort of recurring problem. And in order to solve that problem, they have to make an input. Maybe that comes in the form of money. They have to spend money to solve the problem. Maybe that comes in the form of time. That's an hourglass, by the way. They have to spend a lot of time solving the problem. Or maybe that just comes in the form of a lot of frustration oh. or potentially all of these. Okay, so to solve a problem, this input is required. Now on the other side, the, the user is looking for some sort of outcome. Now, if someone is looking for an app-based solution to help them solve this recurring problem, then it is very likely their input currently is very high. They are spending a lot of money or a lot of time or are just very frustrated, constantly dealing with this problem. And chances are their outcome is probably not as good as it should be because of all the waste and the loss that's happening. So what you want to do is flip this for them. So with your app, you want the input required by someone to solve a problem to be very low and you want the outcome to, for them to be higher. That is where the value lies. Let's go through a quick example. Let's say you have identified a problem with medium-sized lawn care service businesses. And the problem is that they are missing a lot of payments from their recurring customers. Customers are leaving checks under the rugs on their front porch. They are paying via Venmo and just forgetting to, or maybe they are forgetting to pay via cash. And this is a really big problem, obviously, because money is being lost but a lot of time is also being spent by these companies trying to recover those losses. So you wanna build an app to solve that problem. And in order to make that app as valuable as possible, we need to do two things. Number one, we need to reduce the input or reduce the waste and loss. Now the loss is coming in the form of lost money and the waste is coming in the form of wasted time following up trying to recoup that money. And the second thing is we need to increase the outcome. Now the outcome is having more money coming in because they are actually being paid in full and because they no longer have to spend time trying to recoup that money, they actually have more time to take on maybe more jobs and increase their revenue even more. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video that increasing the value in this way really just requires a mindset shift. And the reason why I say that is because most people approach app development with a features first mindset. They think features before anything else and that's what they attach to value. But in reality, if you approach development with a problem and outcome first perspective, then you're going to be able to let those things guide the features that you build. So these are actually the levers that you want to pull on when developing your app in order to increase the value for the user. All right, so let's pull on those levers with our lawn care example app. 
So keeping the reduction in waste and loss in mind and the increase in outcomes in mind, I want three core components to be a part of this app. Number one, I want payments to happen through the app, but in a way that is still easy for the customer and makes the customer feel safe. Number two, I want a way for the lawn care companies to automatically receive the payment when the job is done without them having to manually do anything. And number three, I want a way to prevent the risk of a company completing a job without receiving payment on the other side. And this is important because this is in an industry where payment typically happens after the service has been completed. So with these lawn care companies, we are taking the current input and outcome they're experiencing and we are adjusting these proportions. Now, to be clear, with the very first version of your app, you are likely not going to be flipping these upside down. The first version of your app might take the input and bring it down here with the outcome more like this. Maybe the expanded version of your app after you launch that first version, go through iterations, maybe that brings the input more down here and the outcome more like this. And as you continue to iterate and evolve your app, you just want to keep pulling on those levers, reduce the input, increase the outcome. All right, so I mentioned I was going to show you an example of a real app that puts this to practice. And so we're going to jump over to an app called Reps Tracker. You may have seen us mention this before. It was built by one of our clients, Kirsten, and she's done just a really great job of it. But as a quick overview, Reps Tracker is designed for real estate investors, so people who run short term rentals or long term rentals. And there are certain tax incentives available to these investors, but in order to take advantage of them, the investors have to track and log their time and the different things they do in order to manage and run their investments. So we're going to do something kind of fun. There is a one minute long explainer video down here at the bottom. We're going to play through this and call out every single lever that Kirsten has pulled with this app. Are you a real estate investor in short-term or long-term rentals who is sick of seeing your hard-earned money fly out the window? That is loss in terms of money. Are you looking for a better way to document your material participation hours? Stop using spreadsheets, notebooks, or calendars to log your time entries. This is time spent and frustration, so waste. Stop trying to modify generic time tracking apps to fit your unique needs as a real estate. Frustration, so more waste. State investor. These methods are slow and imperfect. Frustration. Can lead to mistakes or omissions, leaving you susceptible to a costly IRS audit. That would be a lot of waste, a lot of time spent, uh, potentially loss in terms of money if you don't have the right documentation, but you've tried to claim these tax breaks. Log your material participation hours on the go. The better way, with the REPS Tracker mobile app. REPS Tracker allows you to log time entries as you go, wherever you are. You can track your progress in real time, allowing you to make real estate decisions accordingly. You can even track the hours of your spouse or other team members using the same account. Upload photo or file evidence for every entry, strengthening your case against an IRS audit. Store all your data on the cloud so you never lose it and download everything as a spreadsheet whenever you need it. Increase your profit margin one minute at a time. And there is the outcome. Increase your profit margin. So you can see here that Kirsten has pulled on the levers really, really well, decreasing the loss, decreasing the waste, and then the feature set is directly applicable to those things. And then the outcome is increasing the profit margin. So, so clear. Now, when you can dig into the waste, the loss, the outcome this much, they start to become quantifiable. And when that happens, pricing your app becomes a lot easier. Really, it turns into 
kind of a simple math equation. Does my app or will my app help a person save more waste or loss than the app costs to use every single month? If yes, then it is a no brainer for a prospective user to convert into becoming an, a paying user. Now with our client Kirsten who built Reps Tracker, it's no surprise that soon after she launched, she started having a new user sign up every 30 minutes or in her first fiscal year, she hit $100,000 in revenue. And in the year following, she was on track to annihilate that in her words. And look, if you wanna build your own no-code app, the next thing you need to do is head to a free workshop we put together. The link is on the screen right now. It's gonna show you how to become a successful app entrepreneur. And look, a lot of our clients started with this workshop. So head there next. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop, and we will hope to see you there.